right guys, check it out. This is about as loud as it gets, and as smoky as it gets, it's on startup still. This wire will just go inside the tent. This is our controller, and it's looking good. This air is absolutely piping hot. The exhaust is doing its job. I'm gonna show you how to put this whole setup together. Let's get right into it. All right guys, let's get started with the unboxing. This is how everything ships from Vavor. And here is the unit itself. As you can see, it is like ridiculously low price. I, I do not understand how a, a diesel engine or any engine for that matter can be that cheap, but let's keep going with the unboxings. Here is the kind of knockoff Pelican case that I am going with. Now, I may have gone with a bit deeper of a unit so this one basically fits the diesel heater perfectly so it actually kind of clamps down on it and holds it in place so I didn't really need to make a mount but you know in hindsight maybe I should have just made a mount and had a little bit more room to work with in there you guys be the judge when you see how it closes up and everything like that and I'm just showing here that I switched the wire from the right side routed it under the fan and put it out the left side you can actually do that with this unit you don't have to you know do any special modifications for that and I'm kind of just getting my ideas together for how I want everything to look inside of this plastic case so what I did is I got this internal exhaust flange and I'm just shaping the exhaust that came with the unit to hopefully get close to where I want it to fit and just doing the same thing on the intake side I think I want the intake to stick out of the case just like that here I'm getting an idea of what the wire is going to look like and I'm gonna be going over wiring a lot in this video and I'm gonna tell you everything that you need to know it's really no worries at all if you're new to wiring this is the perfect project to get your feet wet and learn everything you need to know for the fuel pump I just use a self tapping screw and rotated the isolator to where it's about 30 degrees the instructions call for the fuel pump to be at 30 degrees with the intake on the lower side and the outlet on the upper side. Now I'm just drilling a hole for the fuel line to go through the case just like that and I, I size the drill bit to be exactly the same size as the fuel line so that it stays sealed from the elements when in use. You'll need to be drilling much larger holes than that so I also got the cheapest hole saw set that I could find on Amazon. I'm going to link all of these products in the description that you'll need to put this kit together you guys so check out the description use those links and get all of the products that I'm using in this video if you want to do the exact same build as me so here I am measuring out the center point for this three inch hole that I need to drill for the heater outlet and I'm just checking it a couple times making sure I got it right And I'm just checking again once I have the outline of the hole etched into the plastic. And my original plan was just to stick the outlet out of the side of the case like this, but as you can see, there's, there's not much to grab onto for the duct. So you'll see later that I came up with a different solution with a three inch flange to join the two. And obviously I'm doing the same for the inlet side of the heater. It's a three inch uh, flange that goes straight through there. This one, this piece comes with the kit actually. So it just has an attachment point for this uh, vent. And I'm gonna connect these two the same way I'm gonna do on the outlet later. But anyways, here's this vent that I was talking about earlier. This will help make the unit weatherproof if I have the case standing up just like this water or rain or snow or whatever should hit that top and kind of just roll off the side just like that so we shouldn't have any issues with weather if that's outside all right now let's get started on routing the exhaust as i said before i got an exhaust flange that will help protect the plastic on the case so i'm just going to route the exhaust tube from the diesel heater exhaust outlet straight into the inlet of that piece And 
And this is how the exhaust flange kind of goes through the outside of the case. You have your three holes and then you put some gaskets in between that unit and the plastic just to make sure there's additional protection from the heat. Now on the intake side, I just want to run this tube straight out the side of the case and maybe put a hose clamp on that intake filter. And it'll look something like this once I'm done cutting the intake tube. So what I do is I find the center point where I'm happy with, mark it real quick, and then drill straight through the case, just like on the exhaust side. And now I'm just getting an idea of what the final assembly will look like and get an idea of how much of the tube I'm gonna have to cut off later. That's how it'll work except for the intake air filter will be just right up against the case. As I said before, there are these heat resistant gaskets that go on the exhaust flange, kind of just extra measure of protection for the plastic there. And now I'm just drilling out the three mounting holes. You have some screws that come with the exhaust flange as a kit and they have locking washers along with some backing nuts that you'll install later. But for now, I'm just installing everything loosely to get an idea of how things are gonna look in the final assembly and hopefully connecting up the exhaust from the heater. Now I just get a little bit of help from my son Elias who uh, saw that I was struggling a bit maybe with the fuel line. So this is how the fuel line system works. I saw some other videos where they actually tried putting the plastic fuel line and he's just all over the place. They actually tried putting the plastic fuel line over these inlets. No, you're supposed to use the rubber fuel line that they give you to help you connect the plastic fuel line with uh, the rest of the system. So just cut yourself an appropriately sized length piece from the rubber fuel line that they supply, put it over the connection point, and then shove the plastic fuel line into that and then put a hose clamp over it. That's it. So the reason that you're seeing me cut this other side of the, like the smooth part of the exhaust off is because I found out that the wavy part does not fit over this exhaust flange. It is way too small to fit over that. And so I cut a piece of the, uh, the other side of the smooth part of the exhaust that actually does fit over it. And I'm hoping to join it up in a way that uh, is exhaust leak resistant at least. And um, I'm going to tell you right now, this doesn't end up working out as you may guess. Uh, just twisting this on the other side wouldn't work. Um, it works okay for a temporary solution while I figure out the final one. So this is kind of, I'm heat wrapping it. I'm going to see if it works. Uh, in the next couple minutes just so that I can see if the system runs okay. But it ends up leaking a lot of exhaust inside the case and I really don't like that. So what you really need to do is get a Webasto OEM exhaust pipe length and I'll show you how to do that later. But for now, here's how I installed the temporary system. And as you can see, all the fuel lines have been routed and they go into the bottom of the case there and I'm almost ready to test. The only thing we really have left to do is to go get a bit of diesel fuel into the fuel tank and to and to install the pickup tube all the way into the bottom of the fuel tank. So that's what I'm gonna do right here. First, I cut the pickup tube to the appropriate length. Then I cut a hole in the top of the tank near the outlet, which is just gonna make it easier for me to put the pickup tube on the bottom where it belongs because I can actually reach my long piano fingers all the way under there and bring it up. There's kind of a rubber gasket on top of this and then you have a nut that you're going to put over that outlet and this is what it looks like and it's like a nut and washer that kind of clamps down and makes sure that nothing escapes out the sides of this or anything like that. So once you tighten down that nut all you have to do is make sure the pickup is in the right place down there and 
to me, I don't think I could get it any further towards the bottom. And then once you're done with that, just fill it with diesel, attach your fuel line to the top there, just like I'm doing right here. And then your fuel system is complete. Now let's move on to our electrical setup. So as you guys know, uh, here's the video if you haven't already. I have a small 700 watt solar power system that has a DC fuse distribution block that can distribute power to any DC accessories that I'd like to add in the future. So I have six inputs for that. I've only used, I think, one or two really for like a water pump and for a my fridge. So what I'm gonna do is just add this as one of my inputs in that fuse block. And to do so, I'm just cutting a small length of wire. This is 14 gauge wire and it matches what comes from Vavor for this unit so I think it's uh, appropriately sized. I'm going to put a female connector on one side and a terminal on the other side. If you haven't already, get one of these kind of automatic wire stripping slash crimp tools. It has been super helpful to me throughout this whole project. Once you have them crimped on, use some fire to uh, heat shrink the rest of the wrap on. So that's, that's what I'm doing right now. When you're done, you're just gonna have a short length of wire with one female connector on one side, and on the other side, you just have a terminal connector, which is what's actually going to bolt down onto my fuse block. And I'm just doing the same exact thing for the positive side. So strip both sides of the wire back, put the appropriately sized connector into each end, crimp it down, use some fire to heat shrink it on, and then you're done. The heater unit came with a fuse housing and a, I believe a 20 amp fuse. So I just yanked that thing out of the connector that they provided and put it into my fuse block assembly. Then I'm going to take out the screw for the positive side terminal put that through the terminal that I attached to one side of the uh, positive wire. And then of course I have the female connector on the other side, which we'll go over later. And I'm doing the exact same thing on the ground side or the negative side. So I'm just getting that terminal and connecting it down to the ground on the fuse block. So now this is the final setup. Now what I have to do is lengthen the wire that I'm going to use. So to start out with, I'm just going to cut off the fuse housing that came with the unit, strip one side, and put on a male connector. And you might see where I'm going with this. So that's how they fit together with the female connectors. So I'm putting a male connector on the other side of the positive cable, crimping it on, and yada, 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 heat shrinking it down, getting the appropriate length. And this is where the positive wire leads go straight into the plug on that side. And here is the ground side, the negative side. And obviously that length that they supply is not enough at all to go all the way inside the vehicle from the outside. So what I'm doing is giving that some extra length. Again, doing the same exact thing, crimping it down, heat shrinking it, all that good stuff. Except for, for this side, I'm getting myself an extra length of black wire from my roll of 14 gauge wire. So I'm matching up the lengths of wire, positive and negative, and then I'm doing again, same thing, cut, strip, twist together, and this time I'm lengthening the wire, so I'm putting it into a butt connector, crimping it in, and heat shrinking it all down. And then on the end, of course, to match the positive side, what I'm doing is putting that same male connector. So again, cut, strip, um, you know, twist the wires, put the connector on, all that good stuff. So once we're done with this, you're gonna see how the entire harness looks. I wanna make it as simple as possible. You have the positive and negative power supply. Those go into the rest of the harness. This may look complicated, but it's really not. This set of wires, this system, uh, you have three red, white, and blue wire that go into the uh, display. And then the other two wires, the yellow and I think orange one, those just power the fuel pump. So you have seven total wires. And here I am just plugging them into the female connectors that go into the fuse block 
that I showed you how to set up earlier. This way I can have a quick disconnect and I don't have to screw on the terminals every single time. So what I'm gonna do here is hook everything up so that it's functional, plug in the fuel pump, plug in the main harness plug there, see if this thing can turn on. And I'm happy to report we have power to the display. And so now we're just going to see how this thing powers up and how it affects our battery. That sound you hear is the fuel pump priming. So it's actually taking fuel up from the fuel tank. And as you can see, I have way too much line here, but it eventually makes its way into the filter and that filter fills up and then the fuel can make its way into the heater unit itself. And then we're starting to get some warm air here. So now I'm powering the unit down and getting it ready to make some edits to the design here. As I said before, this exhaust ended up leaking inside of the box itself. So I needed to get a wider pipe, uh, inside diameter pipe. So I'll link this one, of course, along with everything else. You can cut it to length and it will still fit over the exhaust flange. As I said before, the one that comes with all these kits is not big enough to fit on the flange, only the ends are. But this one, the full length is able to fit over. So now I am matching up that new exhaust pipe with the old one and then cutting it. Once I finished cutting the new pipe, I made sure that it all matched up with the old one. And then I actually cut off the flange part of uh, this outlet and started making the final assembly for the outlet side just to make sure that if any exhaust does leak out in the future, it doesn't make its way into the actual air pipe. Now I'm slipping the heat shield from before over the new exhaust pipe and pay attention here because when I put it on, I realize that the exhaust pipe is too loose. Even when I put two hose clamps on it, of course, it's not going to clamp down enough onto the flange to make it seal completely. It'll get it pretty tight, but it's not enough to seal it. So what you need is some of this gasket maker. This is an exhaust gasket, ultra copper. So it's exhaust gasket maker. You're gonna wanna get plenty of this stuff around there to fully seal the exhaust pipe onto your flange and your outlets and, and all that sort of stuff. So get a bunch of that stuff on there, spread it on there with your finger. I do recommend gloves, especially when working with fiberglass. I didn't have any available at this moment. And uh, you know, I made sure to wash my hands thoroughly and everything while doing this. But let's get into some wiring. Guys, I'm gonna do my best to explain all the wiring extremely simply. And this is gonna be our final wiring setup. Now, I know that wiring and electrical will be the main obstacle for most people to get over. I wanna assure you that it's extremely simple, you guys. So again, we have our positive and negative power supply cables here. Those are 14 gauge, and you saw me extend them and put those male connectors on. The second system, of course, is the fuel pump. Now this one stays inside of the case. And then finally, our third system is the controller wiring. So what we need to do is get these two wiring systems to protrude outside the box while remaining weatherproof. So we don't wanna just leave the box open in the weather. So what we need to do is drill through the box cut those wires to an appropriate length to where the inside can connect and the outside can connect. And between that, we're putting some weatherproof terminals. So what these allow you to do is to pass wires through a hole that you drill while maintaining a weatherproof and strong connection. So the way these work is you put one side of the terminal and kind of shove it through the hole that you drill and then you pull back on a tab shove the wire into the hole that's made for the wire to go in and then when you release the tab it crimps down on it and allows electricity to flow through itself to the matching tab on the outside of the terminal of course all these get covered 
with waterproof IP65 rated whatever coatings. And of course, first you wanna pass the wires into the weatherproof terminal, then go ahead and put the wires in and then close the tabs on each of the wires. And that connects one side, the outside, to the inside wiring. And of course, once you slide that piece that you put on earlier over the wires and you screw it in, it is now waterproof and weatherproof and all that good stuff. Now you can get some quick disconnect versions of this, but I wanted to keep this really cheap and I feel like if I disconnected the wiring, I would just lose it. So I'm just going kind of the easy route with this, uh, connect it up and then forget about it. And the wires can just hang out on the outside. That should be no problem at all. The, the controller and everything is gonna be inside the tent anyway. It's not gonna stay outside and all of that uh, power wire is gonna go inside the vehicle as well. So only the wire sheathing and all that stuff will be out in the elements. And of course, as long as the bare metal isn't affected by water or anything like that, everything should be fine. So here we have the controller on, all the wiring is passing through the box. So I'm just verifying that my connection inside the terminal worked. And now what I'm gonna do is cut the fuel pump wiring down to length. Now again, this wiring does not need to go through or pass through the bulkhead of the box. So what you can do is just find the appropriate length that you feel is best, cut the wiring down, and then take the connector side, cut the connector off of the end, like I'm doing here, and then just butt connect those wires together. And that's how you just cut it down to length and plug it in, uh, make sure the, the wires are, you have enough length in them, zip tie it down, and then be done with it. So this is our final wiring setup. We have the seven pin plug there, and then you have your positive and negative cable, your controller cables, and here's the ugliest wire sheathing you've ever seen. And like I just showed you, your fuel pump wiring shortened down to length, so it all fits inside the box and the correct wires can protrude outside the box. And this is my portability shot here. So you could just kind of wrap the wires around the handle there. Maybe I could put like a, a post or something that I can wrap them around. Whatever works, I'm sure I'll figure something out in the future or I can invest in some of those quick disconnect terminals in the future if I feel like upgrading. So check out my quote unquote mounting system here. <laughs> I took some parking blocks that I got on Amazon, just the cheapest ones I could find, and I ratchet strapped them around the circumference of the spare tire. And then I also ratchet strapped down the diesel heater setup that we just put together. And that seems to hold it pretty securely. I'd be confident in taking this on a road trip, no problem. So here I'm just going to open up the restless off-road swing out and kind of show you. Uh, these won't be obviously twisted if I'm actually taking it on the road or anything, but this is kind of how I passed it under the spare. It also shows how I can open up the swing out and still keep the heater hose in the tent without interrupting flow if my wife is still Sleeping, I need to get something out of the back, whatever the case may be. The whole setup is modular, it works. The swing out system works with this as well. I'm just gonna stuff the controller up into the tent and I'll have full control from there. Uh, whether the swing out is open or closed, it shouldn't matter. So here is what my final setup is gonna look like somewhat. I'm gonna pass those wires through the, the bottom of the tailgate there, plug them in like I showed you before. And after everything is set up the way that it's supposed to be, I'm gonna close the swing out and do a final test just to make sure this thing is ready to go and get some winter camping trips on. Let's go winter camping, dry air inside the tent. Cannot wait to try this out. And you've probably been wondering where I'm gonna mount my fuel. Well, I am actually using the trash bag on the back of the spare tire. It seems to be plenty durable enough to hold a couple liters of diesel. Now I'm cutting our fuel line down to its final length and running it into the bottom of the diesel heater. You can see I spilled a little bit of diesel on my spare tire there in that process, but that's no, no worries. I can always uh, clean that up. And now the unit is just warming up and I'm gonna see how it performs.
This thing is really quiet, you guys. And I almost forgot to mention, I kind of found a new use for my old, not so great working exhaust pipe setup. I actually routed it outside on the outside of the flange so that I can direct exhaust even further away from the tent. So, and that was kind of my solution for mounting up the muffler as well. Maybe over here you can hear it better. There's a fan intake, air intake. Okay guys, here we are, it's getting started, a little smoky at first. This is how loud it gets, I think, at the maximum though. I also think it was a little extra smoky because it's burning off some of those like packaging oils that, you know, come on some of these metal parts to protect them from corrosion. All right, to give you an idea of how hot this thing can get, uh, I'm gonna need to get a different outlet here just a three inch right there because this thing is basically toast it's warm dry air boys check it out it's so hot it's melting this thing <laughs> i'm gonna leave it on for a little while and uh just let it run a, a full heat cycle and then i think we'll be all done Man, this was such a fun project. And this probably is one of the funnest tinker projects I've ever worked on. If you're not really wanting to get into messing with the vehicle itself and you just wanna try something out, you can actually pick up a lot of automotive skills by putting this sort of diesel heater setup together. If you've never done wiring before, now's your chance to learn. If you've never put together a silicone exhaust gasket, now's your chance. If you haven't hole sawed through anything, drilled through anything, things like that, this is such a great learning opportunity. I think anybody with a willingness to be patient and work their way through any issues will get this done no matter the skill level. So guys, let me know what you think about this video and let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and like the video. We'll see you in the next one.